Lighting in video games is tricky, and getting beautiful, natural looking light in real time can be a very resource intensive process, and even high end computers can struggle with it. And so, in this Godot tutorial, I'm going to teach you about baked light mapping, which is a way to light your game without causing your computer to catch on fire. So let's open up Godot, and here's my setup. This is not important, and I won't be getting into how to do this because I'm assuming you already have your own unique scene that you want to light. To better illustrate this demo, the first thing I'm going to do is right click on my scene's main node and select Add Child. I'm going to type World Environment in the search bar, click on World Environment, and click Create. Then I'll click on the World Environment node, and in the inspector, next to the Environment property, I'm going to click on Empty and select New Environment, which will turn my objects pitch black. Don't worry, this is normal. Now we're going to introduce some new lighting by right clicking on the main node again, Add Child, and this time write OmniLight in the search bar. Click on OmniLight and click Create. Now there's a light in the scene and I'm going to adjust its position and radius a bit so everything is more evenly lit. So now this scene is being lit in real time, but you'll notice that the areas of the cube that are not being lit are pitch black, which isn't very realistic. Normally light bounces off of surfaces, creating light reflections on other surfaces, but this takes a crazy amount of computing power to do in real time, and so right now Godot just doesn't do it. To get more realistic lighting, the first thing I'm going to do is click on this orange cube and click on the scene icon to enter its scene. In it, I'm going to click on its mesh instance node, and in the inspector, under the geometry tab, I'm going to tick the box next to Use in Baked Light. Then, I'm going to click on Mesh at the top of the editor, and select Unwrap UV2 for Light Map. Then, I'll repeat the same process for all the other objects in my scene. Once that's done, return to your main scene, and right click on the main node to add another child. Type Baked Light Map in the search bar, Click on Baked Light Map and click Create. This will create a blue box around your scene where all of the light mapping calculations will take place. I'm going to make it a bit smaller, but make sure that everything that needs to be lit in your scene, including the lights, are completely encapsulated in this blue box. Once you've done that, click on the Baked Light Map node and at the top of the editor, click on Bake Light Maps. This may take a while. Once it's done, we can hide the Baked Light Map from view and now you can see that the shadows on the orange box are much more realistic. And that's pretty much it. In the inspector, under the Bake tab, there are a few settings you can tweak to adjust the look of your light map. They all do pretty much what they say they do, and I encourage you to experiment and see how they work. I'm just going to turn up the energy a bit to make it brighter, and click on Bake Light Maps again to update the light map. Now your game has nice looking lighting, and it'll run just fine even on low-end potato computers. One thing you should know is that baked light mapping is only for game objects that are not going to move. If we move this orange box after baking the light map, you'll see that it looks really ugly because the light map information on it hasn't changed, leaving these dark patches on the cube. For game objects that do move, you're going to have to stick with real time lighting. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, etc. Thank you. Have a nice day.